This is Kathy Beal of EmpowermentUnlimited.net with Astro Insight for the week of May 9, 2022. Could it get any more intense? Well, you know, if I ask a question like that, the answer is obvious. You betcha. But fortunately, the sky is giving us an awful lot of energy, a new injection of energy, like an energy drink, or if you're old enough that this has meaning to you, a huge old case of Popeye spinach. There are four big events this week, two pairs of bookends at the beginning of the week and on the weekend. The first pair is going to pull us in two directions simultaneously. Mercury stations retrograde on the 10th. We're already feeling it as the week starts. We've been feeling it for a few days. Mercury is just inside the doorway of his airy home, Gemini, where he's just really into darting around and easy communication. And it's that is uh, ooh shiny object territory. He will very soon inch back into Taurus and return our focus to very mundane, practical, bottom line matters. Mercury is retrograde from the 10th until the 3rd of June. He doesn't get back into Gemini until the middle of June. Mercury will be moving back into eclipse territory in a couple of weeks, but for right now, the retrograde is going to take him through Gemini. So know that people are going to be thinking very quickly, not focusing. There's going to be a huge amount of data flying around. Some of it is real. Some of it is distraction. Lots of distraction in the news and possibly in your own life. So just know that you're going to have monkey mind, squirrel-like behavior darting all over the place It is possible to get important information from all of this, but do know that the possibility of getting something wrong or thinking you're saying one thing, but different words coming out and you don't realize it, just keep in mind the noise level is high. Everyone's thinking like a machine gun, talking like a machine gun. Take your time, which is going to be a challenge because Mercury flies around in Gemini. Lots more about this in my Guide to Mercury Retrograde at Ohm Times. The other thing that's going to make it challenging is on the very day that Mercury enters Gemini, Jupiter changes signs. He moves out of his traditional home of Pisces where we all can just kind of stare at screens or the clouds or wonder what day it is. In other words, a distilled experience of the last couple of years. Jupiter moves into Aries and the lights come back on, the fires come back up, pilot lights get lit, energy levels ramp up, and the atmosphere generally becomes much more boisterous and adventurous and impulsive and immediate and active, assertive, aggressive, Could be a lot of fighting or feeling like I'm going to just go do something. Like I'm not putting up with stuff. You'll notice Venus moved into Aries and a lot of women took to the streets. I would imagine that uh, that's going to only become more once Jupiter enters Aries as well. He's going to be there until the end of October. The benefit is, well, several. You will have a lot of energy to actually attack things. There's a boldness. There's an assertiveness. Everyone's inner Captain Kirk will come out or Wonder Woman, whatever superhero, leader, solo agent, avatar you want to use to inspire you for this. But on the other hand, this is not conciliatory. You may be naturally quiet. You may normally keep your opinions to yourself. You may normally just go about your business. And for the next number of months, you may find yourself actively engaging, advocating, fighting When the weekend rolls around, everyone is challenged to put their big kid pants on, to step up, to take responsibility for themselves. Everybody hits a wall, a challenge, a no, an obstacle, a demand for accountability, a demand that we act like adults when the sun squares Saturn. And this happens on the next eclipse of the season, the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse. 
This one holds the potential to be extremely intense, but take heart. It also holds the potential for us to get to the bottom of a lot of things, to bring all kinds of hidden icky stuff to the surface where we can see it and do something with it, and to move us toward emotional evolution of some sort on a personal level. This eclipse is opposite the one that took place in November that started the cycle. It's not exactly opposite, but it's close enough that there could be a storyline that you can draw from late November to now. How did something deepen? How are you learning more? How are you really at the point of wanting to purge, wanting to let go, wanting to clean out? The moon is in an opportunity aspect with Pluto, its ruler and the guy who is in charge of what's really deep, powerful, and hidden. It's also in a forceful aspect with Saturn. It's a square. It's really going to stress our notions of responsibility, of maturity, of commitment, of our commitment to the greater good, and it's going to hit notions of government power, but good. This one is a recurrence of a lunar eclipse at this spot in May 2003. And my personal memory of how that played out was being at a meeting that exploded with power games. So there could be something really dramatic that you witness and it could end up being a turning point in your life. Big, big, big stuff. Just know you have the energy and the wherewithal to deal with any of this and sort through the noise and the flurry of information. There's probably something in there that could be very beneficial to you. Homing thought of the week. I can face this. Song of the week. Greatest American hero theme song. Yeah, seriously. Image of the week, pouring Drano down a drain. And bonus image, Betty Davis in All About Eve saying, fasten your seatbelts, it's going to be a bumpy night. You'll learn more about this in my forecast for the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse, which will be up by the middle of the week at my site, empowermentunlimited.net where you can sign up for my mailing list, book a session with me, and get my talk about the current Taurus Scorpio eclipses living in the material world. I'm Kathy Beal, a professional astrologer with more than 30 years experience. I host the show Celestial Compass on Om Times Radio on the first and third Monday of every month at 5 p.m. Eastern. I also host lively conversation on Facebook at Empowerment Unlimited and the group The Astro Insight Lounge. I have lots of bonus content at patreon.com slash Kathy Beal, and I'm really grateful to the people who support my work there. I'm on Instagram at at K.A. Beal and on YouTube at the Professional Aquarian Channel. Talk to you next week.